Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to go over an example where we're going to use the squeeze theorem. So as a reminder, the squeeze theorem says, suppose g of x is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to h of x for all x close to some value a, but not equal to a. So if the limit of the g of x when x approaches a is equal to l, and it's the same for h of x, then the function that is being squeezed by g of x and h of x must also be equal to that limit. And I don't really want to go over much of the theory. I, the focus of this video is just going to be how to apply squeeze theorem. Um, so yeah, OK. Let's do an example where we're asked to compute the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times cosine of 1 over x. Okay, And looking at this, this is pretty confusing. And we can't evaluate it directly because we've got cosine of 1 over 0, so cosine of an infinity. And yeah, we just can't evaluate it directly. And it's, it's not super clear exactly what method we might want to use here. But if you've got squeeze theorem in your course, a lot of the times when you have like a trig function and it's got something that you can't evaluate inside of it, uh, a lot of the time you're going to use squeeze theorem for that. So that's one indication. But the easiest way that I find to start a question like this is to take something from the function of the limit you're trying to evaluate and try to kind of write the range of that function and then manipulate it into something that looks more like your limit, which is a little confusing, but let's, let's break that down a bit. So in this case, the trig function, we know that the range of that is between negative one and one, right? That's a pretty fundamental trig math. So let's just, let's just write that out. Forget about the one over x, let's just, let's just write out negative one is got to be, or cosine of x has got to be between uh, negative one and one, right? This is just trig, basic trig. So, well, we also know that, I mean, cosine of anything is going to be between negative one and one, right? It doesn't matter what we're taking cosine of. The, the cosine function must be between negative one and one, whatever that will spit out. So let's Let's write that to make it look a little bit more like the limit that we're trying to evaluate. So we'll do cosine of 1 over x, right? And this, this inequality, or, or equality, I guess, it still holds true, right? OK. So we're still trying to make this look like the limit that we're trying to evaluate. So one thing that would make sense is why don't we just multiply everything by x squared? Right? And let's do that. So this would be negative x squared. And then we've got x squared times cosine of 1 over x. And then this is x squared. And there's one thing that I missed here that I want you to take a second and try to think of what that might be. So in order for this to be true, this is assuming that x is greater than 0, right? Because remember, when, we're, when we've got these uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and we're multiplying by negatives, we need to switch the signs of the equalities, right? So let's just write off to the side here, assuming that x is greater than 0, right? Then it will be true. Let's just let's follow through with this assumption for now. Okay. So, reminder, we're trying to solve the limit as x approaches 0, right? So, what we can do is just take the limit as x approaches 0 for all three of these uh, functions, right? So, limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared. There's one thing I'm missing here. 
Recall, we're assuming that x is greater than 0. So if x is greater than 0, that means that we're evaluating this limit from the right-hand side. So we need to have that little plus sign above the 0. Okay. And the same logic, we're going to follow that through for every part of this inequality. Great. Okay. And the thing in the middle is really, really close to what we're trying to solve. We're evaluating the right-hand limit, but we want the, the total limit, right, for the right and the left if they're, if they're equal. But we can still evaluate the left and the right side of this equality, right? Because, I mean, as x approaches 0 from the right of negative x squared, and the same for positive x squared, that will, of course, be 0. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that one out. So, boom, we've got this, cosine 1 over x, this is also 0. So, by squeeze theorem, you can say that, well, this thing in the middle, if it's being squeezed by 0 and 0, then as x approaches 0 from the right, this must also be evaluated to 0. Right? So, and whenever you're applying a theorem like this, you should make sure to always write the theorem that you're using. So by squeeze theorem, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, or from the right, sorry, of x squared cosine 1 over x, this is equal to 0. Great. So we basically, I mean, we applied squeeze theorem once, but we're not entirely done because we need to check the left-hand side. And to do that, well, why don't we just assume that x is less than 0, right? So let's do that. Let's, assuming x is less than 0, well, if, if we're multiplying this inequality by a, a negative, then it's just going to flip the signs, right? So our negative x squared is going to be actually, well, it's going to be negative times x, which is a negative number, which we would know. So that will be positive, right? So that's going to be like the, the upper side of our, uh, of our squeeze theorem. And then the normal, the positive x squared, if x is assumed to be negative, of course, that will just be uh, negative, right? So... This will be minus x squared greater than or equal to, and then we've got x squared cosine 1 over x, and this is negative x squared. Oh, and my bad, that's just positive. Okay. And same idea, we'll take the limits, same exact way, but this time we're approaching from the left-hand side, right? And here we are. x squared cosine 1 over x. Same thing, lots of writing. Okay, this is 0. And then this limit, just for sake, I'm not going to rewrite it. That will also be between zero and zero right which is great it's great for us so that means that by squeeze theorem the limit as x approaches zero from the left of x squared cosine of one over x that will also be equal to zero right so we have this one this equation that i'm starring the left limit and we have the right limit, right? And if the <clears throat> if the right limit and the left limit, oh, and sorry, I kind of started in the wrong spot there. The right hand side of the limit and the left hand side of the limit are equal. Then of course the limit itself at zero will also be equal to that value. So we can finally conclude this problem. 
and say that the limit is x approaches 0 of x squared cosine of 1 over x, that will be equal to 0. And that's it.